Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome back aboard the Tramp Speedmaster Chrome Edition. Thank you sir in the white van. Didn't take long till I got a white van in today's edition. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be a bit of an ad hoc video. Sad times, because it's the last time I'm gonna be riding the Speedmaster Chrome. She has to go back to Triumph. This time always happens with lone bikes. But uh, quite often I'm not too bothered. But every once in a while, a bike comes up. I'm quite interested in myself as a potential bike to own. And this fits into that category. So uh, I've kind of treated this a bit as an extended test ride. So in this video, as well as just being a bit of a general chat about the bike and stuff generally, I thought I'd give you some of the sort of, my thoughts before the bike goes back, the lessons I've learned since I've had it. So stick around, stay tuned. It's a bit of a vloggy thing about the Speedmaster Chrome. All right, so welcome back to the channel, folks. Great to have you along. Just wondering where to go. Uh, let's go down this way for a change. Actually, I'm indicating and don't need to. What an idiot. So yeah, the Speedmaster Chrome, a bike I really like. I do love a Triumph Bonneville me. And along with the Speed Twin, this is up there in my top two favourites. Possibly I do like the uh, Scrambler 900 as well and I like the Bobber as well but uh, this is probably number one or two in the list and I already own a Speed Twin so uh, this is certainly something that interests me. And it's also an absolutely beautiful day which is very rare this summer. I'm always moaning about the weather here in Blighty. I'm recording this on August the 16th so it's pretty much exactly a month before I'm planning to actually publish the video. The date may vary slightly. And uh, yeah, in case you're wondering, I do record videos slightly in advance because I like to try and make sure I get two videos out a week if I can and occasionally stuff crops up or I might want a weekend away or something. So I do record in advance to make sure I've got videos lined up. I'm sure pretty much every organized vlogger does that, don't they? Bruce, are you watching? <laughs> oh, that was a road I wanted. Bit of a late decision. Bit of gravel there. ABS cut in, but it all worked. So where was I? I don't know, I don't think I'd really start, I don't know. But anyway, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching once again. And uh, thanks for all the kind comments, by the way, that you've been giving me about my new Kawasaki that I've been riding, the Z900 RS. I'm filming this on the day that I published my uh, latest biker scran with Jeff and Dan, where we went to Pat's Baps, the Cotswold Cafe, up in Morton in Marsh. Lots of people have given me great recommendations for some baggage and stuff the Kawasaki. I said that it was between the Hepco and Becker and the oh why can I never remember the name of the other stuff something with Moto in it <laughs> and uh, those are the two I'm pursuing it turns out that uh, Hepco and Becker don't actually make a version that fits the Kawasaki Z900 RSSE so uh, those are kind of out so it leaves me back onto the uh, the ones with Moto in the name that I can't remember. And I'll keep calling them the classic bags, but they're not called that either, they're called something else. So they're the ones that I think I'm likely to go for on the Kawasaki. I might go for Hepco and Becker on the uh, Speed Twin because it's just dead handy to have bags when you're on this in this vlogging game because then you can just come out and stick your camera kit in the bags and not have to worry about slinging a bag around your neck or having a rucksack or whatever. A lot of people recommended I just get a rucksack so don't spoil the looks of the Kawasaki with some side bags and I, I get that but I just I just don't like feeling trussed up when I'm riding so rucksacks aren't really for me I do have a Krieger rucksack which is excellent I bought it about nine years ago cost me about 100 quid I did do a review of it but uh, I've, in fact since that review if I can find it I might put a link to the review in the corner just for the fun because it's a rubbish video since that review, I've, I haven't even used that bag once. It still looks brand new in my cupboard. But it is a good rucksack. I mean, the, the way that they strap around you and everything is, is great. I just haven't found a use for it. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, thanks for all those suggestions. So I think that's where I'm going to go on bags on those retro bikes. SW Motec is that name I can never remember. I don't know why I can't remember those bags. But yeah, and they're not called the Classic Range either. They're something like that. But uh, anyway, so that's where I'm going with the bags. All right, so fair enough on that. What about the uh, what about the Speedmaster Chrome then? 
what do I think of it? Well, I've already said I love the bike, and this is, you know, other than the chrome paintwork, is a Speedmaster as I've ridden before and absolutely love. So I still love it. The question is, would you pay the extra, I don't know, 800 quid or whatever it is for the chrome version? The chrome paintwork does look lovely, but a few people have said, what about the sun? Does that not glint off it and blind you? Well, in the time I've had the bike, that's not been an issue. But then to be fair, this is the first time the sun's been out. And it's, as I speak, it's not actually out, and I've not I've not had any glinting off the uh, off the chrome bit, so that's not a problem. The bigger issues for me on the chrome version are keeping it looking lovely and spangly and new. You know, not scratching it with your legs and so on, and the fact that it costs about 800 quid extra over a standard paint job on the Speedmaster. And let's face it, some of the spa uh, standard paint jobs that the Speedmaster comes in are really, really good. So I think probably I, I wouldn't go for the chrome one. Unless it was some special deal that you get from a dealer and it was the same price as the other. And I do quite like the, the paint jobs, the standard paint jobs anyway, on the other Speedmasters. So I don't think I'd pay the extra for the chrome, but definitely the Speedmaster is a winner. Not everything about it is fantastic. Just minor gripes really, so things like the indicator button, I just find a little bit, for some reason it's shaped in this triangular way, and that point on the top, well, that just doesn't doesn't feel right to my thumb, I don't know why, I just don't find I can use that as easily as I can that's with a button that's flat on the top, like every other bike I've ever ridden. Tiny point, but it's just one of those annoyances. I'm not too sure about the engine cases, I'll put a uh, photograph of how the engine cases on here are looking on the screen so you can see what I mean. Now I've not made any attempt to clean those while I've got the bike so it may well be that they clean up better than that but on this chrome one it would be great if they were actually chrome wouldn't it actually I think I might make a late decision and go this way as there's a bit of queue of traffic there oh my road manners are terrible today I do apologize for any would-be motorcyclists or learners don't do as I do <laughs> do as your instructor says anyway yeah where was I yes the engine cases yeah, not sure about the finish on them. On this chrome version, it would look so much better if they were actually polished chrome. And indeed, I think on any version, either blacked out or chrome would look good. But this brushed finish that they've got just doesn't look like it's holding up that well. So not too sure about that either. But that really is the only, the only couple of gripes I've got on the bike, so minor stuff. Everything else about it, I love. The handlebar position I quite like, the fact that uh, you know, it gives you a very laid back, relaxed start sitting on here upright, it's, it's very, well cruiser-esque of course, I'm even getting used to the feet forward position on this, it's not an extreme feet forward thing, it's just nice if you're just poodling around the lanes like I am today on a summer's day, it's absolutely perfect. As I say, I like the way these handlebars sweep back in this manner, usually very comfortable today, not as comfortable as it could be on my left hand, but that's a personal reason because I've actually sprained my left wrist. And before there's any sniggering, I can tell you how I did that. It was actually, I went on a uh, tour of Wales recently on my gold wing with Mrs. Fly. You might have even seen the videos of that tour. Something that didn't get into those videos was when I nearly dropped the bike. Unfortunately, I didn't have the camera rolling at that point, but we'd made a wrong turn. I was following my mate John on his bike. In fact, I was trying to catch him up to tell him he'd turned the wrong way. Uh, and there was a little cutting off the road to turn into and it dropped off the tarmac into dirt and as I dropped off the front wheel of the Goldwing into the dirt I thought to myself actually might not be a great idea going on the dirt with a Goldwing so I kind of stopped with just the front wheel in the dirt and thought well no problem I'll reverse out I'll use the reverse creep mode to get me out of this predicament as I reverse the Goldwing which is a big old heavy bike two up it's almost half a ton in total as I reversed it, the tyre kind of caught the edge of the tarmac. Just ruined my balance slightly. I thought, oh, I'm going to drop this sucker. So, a bit daft really, because I've been in this position before. With all my might, I hauled the bike up. And as I did so, I felt my bad shoulder, which I'm always moaning about, click, and my wrist click, both with popping noises. And then, great pain in both. Not great, particularly as I just had Three days before, I caught his own injection into my shoulder joint to stop the pain, so that set that back. And my sprained wrist, some two weeks after, still hurts. So it's all right if it's in a completely neutral position. 
but in this position there is a slight pain because there's an angle on anyway I'm, no, I'm whinging it's a bit of a whingy video this I apologize so all that was a long way round to one get some sympathy from you which I don't suppose I'll get and two to say why these bars aren't quite as comfortable as they would normally be for me personally at the moment but generally speaking very comfortable place to be so I like that oh opportunity to overtake one thing I love about this nothing behind so much grunt but just rolling on in third gear and away you go absolutely no drama there's no rev counter on here so I can't tell you what the boat is spinned up to but it's not spinning much I'm in fourth now look if I go into six and it's just puttering along it's almost milliard-esque in its relaxed ride really like it such a treat to be out on a day when it's warm it's uh, about 23 degrees celsius or 23 centigrade to any americans watching no idea what that is in fahrenheit but probably around the 70 mid 70s maybe which for this year here in blighty is very pleasant indeed just the right temperature for pottering around and in fact it's the first time this year i think that i've had my summer vented jacket on this is my bearing summer jacket uh, people do ask me what I'm wearing all the time so what I'll do is put some links below to the kit I'm wearing so if you are interested in anything you see I'll put a link below if you can't be bothered to follow those links then uh, check out bikerheads.co.uk they're one of the channel sponsors and if you wonder what on earth or who on earth they are they're importers of bike accessories and clothing including bearing jackets PMJ jeans like I'm wearing and the boots which are from Falco all oh, this kit is great the the PMJ jeans these are the PMJ the jeans as in DU the number two in French although they're Italian jeans they're single layer jeans so they're dead comfy but they're triple A rated they're really really nice and they look as good on the bike as off I think these boots from Falco I've had for a couple of years now they're my go-to boots not only on the bike but for just wearing normally I think they look smart and on a retro bike they're perfect and then this uh, summer vented jacket is unusually good because this is AA rated as well which is quite rare for a vented jacket oh what a chip. excellent made it out of the guilty so yeah all this all I've got underneath this is a hello for cops all I've got under this is a jacket is a t-shirt so it's and I'm feeling absolutely at the perfect temperature that doesn't happen very often when you're riding a bike does it And of course the helmet my trusty Shuba C5 which uh, again I'll put a link below to um, but is also if you don't if you want to find your local dealer or you can't be asked to follow that link then uh, excuse my French a lot of French in this video and yeah Shuba stuff is also distributed by bikeheads.co.uk check them out if you want to find out your local dealer and just for completeness the links I put below not the one to bike heads but the ones uh, to the kit are what are called affiliate links so if you click on them and then you subsequently buy something I get a little bit of a kickback to the channel those links are to sports bike shop an excellent dealer of all things bike clothing I don't have any affiliation with them other than those affiliate links so okay I do have an affiliation link thing with them but I don't talk to them on a regular basis I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that they don't ask me to push their stuff I just find that their pricing their delivery their returns policy all that is really really good so uh, if you're buying online that's who I go to I'm just trying to avoid some of these speed bumps There's a 20 mile an hour limit down here and I'm in second gear on the speed marsh and I have to say 20 miles an hour this just suits this bike in second some bikes that recently I was riding the Ducati Monster I don't know if you saw that video similar roads to this that just doesn't like doing 20 mile an hour limits doesn't matter what uh, what gear you're in you'd have to be feathering the clutch whereas on this with its relaxed nature just just rumbles on doesn't care really is a nice motor this I like this engine a lot You may have heard me say in the past that I'm not a big fan of parallel twins, but 
in this case it's great for this sort of bike it's perfect because it just has low down grunt and tractability oh I can smell that must be the golden chopsticks must be preparing their meals for tonight they smell absolutely lovely Inspired by my friend Richie Vida, I'm on a bit of a health thing at the moment. He's doing this uh, one main meal a day thing. Oh ma'am, as he calls it. I don't know, it might be an official thing. It seems to be working for him, so uh, I can't be having him looking fitter than me. So I've recently signed up to something called the Zoe Study. Again, this is by no means an advert, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. This is a personalised nutrition plan. I know it sounds a little bit girly, but... I like this sort of thing. Basically what they do, they do various tests on you including a two week period where you wear a blood glucose monitor on your on your arm and you, and you log every meal you eat and they monitor how it affects your blood glucose levels. You submit some other tests which I won't go into the details because it's unsavoury if you're eating your dinner or something. Uh, and they work out exactly what uh, microbes you've got in your gut, your gut microbiome. There are good, gut, good uh, microbes and bad microbes it turns out. Let's go this way. And obviously what you want to do really is eat, uh, eat foods that give you good microbes and eat less foods that give you bad ones. Now it turns out, I had the analysis done by the Zoe people, it turns out I've got an awful lot of bad microbes, not very many good ones. So uh, what they do is very clever using artificial intelligence because they've got thousands of people that have done these tests and they know how people react to different foods. They come up with something called a Zoe Predict Score for you personally which, which shows you how any given food will actually affect your body in terms of how you deal with it fat wise how your blood sugar deals with it so it's an indicator for things like diabetes and how it affects your gut microbiome whether you're going to feed your good bugs or put new bad bugs in there I'm very much simplifying this by the way it's very scientific so using my goodness me there's some fantastic views up here as you'll see in a minute so uh, I'll just ride slowly I think I'm in no rush at all dog Whew. where was I yeah uh, microbiome um, yeah so you get this Zoe predict score it tells you exactly how different foods are going to affect you based on thousands of other bits of analysis they've done with people I'm gonna get there's so much trouble for that now sorry whenever I uh, get distracted in that manner I get an awful lot of problems and I lose a load of subscribers so sorry about that if you're affected by what I just said I do apologize I recommend you read my small print at the start of the video if you ever wonder what that bit of text that flashes up at the start of my videos just after I've said hope you're well that's my cue to edit that in there's a whole list of small print there that explains a bit about my videos and it's really aimed at uh, nasty people people that make bad comments on the videos because it amuses me that they have to go and then really struggle to pause that to read it so I always refer them there but if you haven't read it read it and it covers off comments like that anyway where was I so back to Zoe so yeah so I've been doing that and uh, I'm eating healthily I'm eating stuff that's good for my guts it's not calorie counting you can eat as much as little or as little as you like there's nothing off limits you can eat chocolate you can eat burgers you can eat whatever you want but the idea is overall on balance to eat more healthily based on the specifics of your biology so I'm doing that I've been doing it for a couple of months it is an expensive thing if you want to do it you can sign up again no sir I'm in no way affiliated to Zoe, I wish I was because it costs around about five or six hundred quid to do it, to sign up for a year. So if you've got to really want to do it, and there's no doubt about it, it is a bit disruptive to your day-to-day -day life doing it. But you know, overall, if it makes you more healthy, then it's got to be worth doing, isn't it? Anyway, I don't want to be too anal about it, I'm just doing it now to see if I can make myself feel, give myself a bit more energy, lose a little bit of weight, generally do the right thing for my body. It's uh, you know not getting any younger I'm 55 now and uh, I've been I'm lucky enough to have quite a few friends and relatives that have died before their time because of mostly cancer it has to be said and at the moment I've got a good friend who is suffering in the final stages of cancer in fact two friends so it's uppermost in my mind but it's worth looking after yourself I'm uh, firmly of the belief you only get one go at life I wish I wish I was religious and felt differently but I'm, I'm not I think you only get one go at life 
so you've got to make absolutely every day count which is why on a day like today when I could have been doing so many other things like cleaning the bathroom or washing my car or planning some more bike reviews filling in some spreadsheets doing my accounts that sort of stuff the sun's out and I've got a lovely bike like this to ride I'm going to go out and I'm going to ride the bike as Bruce always says live your life and I absolutely 100% agree with that mantra easy to say hard to do but I'm trying my hardest to, uh, to live by anyway gosh get a bit deep this uh, this video isn't it I thought I'd just come out and talk a bit about the Speedmaster Chrome and I'm getting all philosophical anyway squirrel there he nearly wasn't living his life risking risking his life running across in front of me so the other thing that's new today something that again if you watch those uh, Wales tour videos thank you sir you may re recall me talking about I trashed my 360 camera I like a fool stuck it to my uh, Goldwing screen with the sucker cup a cheapo eBay sucking cup it fell off and it completely trashed the camera even though I had the lens covers um, attached destroyed the camera I'd only had it for like that two months because I'd previously dropped one off the bike when I was recording something one of my classic bike reviews so it's two 360 cameras I've lost this year and they ain't cheap so that's an owner and I don't get them for free for some reason Insta don't speak to me they speak to every other vlogger it seems and send them free cameras but not me I do love the Insta360 camera but I do have to pay for them and today is my first run out with my new Insta360 camera that I just bought this week it's attached behind me I can see it in the mirror actually I can see that it's running <laughs> and I can see that it's still there more importantly so hopefully I'll mix a few shots from that camera in on this video it does make editing a lot more difficult that but for the purposes of bike reviews where it shows the position you're sitting I think it's well worth having and indeed if you're away on tour on a bike and I've got a really big super duper tour coming up later in the year so I'm kind of gearing up for that then, uh, then that 360 camera is going to be perfect for that I won't say anything else about that tour because I want it to be a bit of a surprise but you should be seeing that I have seen the sort of run up to Christmas I think if I can get my finger out and edit it Well, what a lovely ride it's been. I can actually uh, take a left here, I think, and turn out to have had quite a nice little ride. Unfortunately, this truck's going this way, but I think we'll see if we can dispatch him in the traditional way. If there's nothing coming here, this is quite a good road. Do I get a glimpse? Well, I can't see around the corner enough for my liking yet. I run overtakes on the if there's no doubt there. If there's doubt, there's no doubt, but there's no doubt here. Plenty of room. Lovely jubbly. This bike sounds really nice up with these standard pipes. One of the things I like about it. Big old pipes. They sound great to me, the rider, but they're not obnoxious that when you start the bike you annoy your neighbours or indeed annoy anyone else in the countryside. Something else I love about this bike. I love its comfort, I love the sound it makes, I love the engine, I love the way it looks. In fact, I just love the way it's a Triumph. I am, I've often said I'm a Triumph fanboy. It's partly a thing because I'm English. And, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Patriotic. That's it. I'm a patriot, so I like to support British companies. Cue all the comments about Triumph not being a British company. But it's as British as any company. And I don't give a monkey to where they actually make the bikes. Well, in the case of this Speedmaster Chrome, it being a special edition, I suspect this might be a Hinkley special, I don't know. Great bit of road this, just uh, near Stoker Church. If you know the area and you've ridden this road, it's weird because this road is much better riding up than it is down. Very strange that. It's good both ways, but because uh, it's nice and bendy look and it's nice and wide so you can see what's coming nice with these trees but for some reason it's much better if you're going uphill than down don't understand why that is 
Brilliant. So I had no idea where I was going to come out and ride to today. Just one of those random things. Oh, back into Buckinghamshire, my home county. Excellent. Because as I was saying, you can't not go out and do something, use a day that's like this. They've been so few and far between this year. So there we are, completely random bit of uh, vloggage. Hope you've enjoyed it. Not got much more to say about the Speedmaster overall, it's a hit for me. I wouldn't go for the Chrome one, I think looking after the Chrome would be a bit of a pain. I'm not sure it's worth the extra money. I am getting a bit of sun glinting off it here now by the way, look that's the first time that's happened since I've had it, but uh, it's not enough to distract me or anything, so that's not the problem, I'm just worried about how long that Chrome would last nicely. You know, is it a bit more of a gimmick or is it a pain to look after? So I'd avoid that and go for one of the standard colours as I say. But otherwise, yeah, if this Speed Twin ever gets the bullet, I can't imagine having a garage without having a Triumph in it. And this certainly is one of the contenders to replace it with, so uh, no hurry. Love the Speed Twin. I've got to do a lot more videos on that yet, comparing that with the uh, Kawasaki. And I'm still, the jury's still out as to which bike I prefer. I have made a video on comparing the two. I don't know if it goes up before this one or after, so either you will have seen that or it's coming soon. Mr. GS rider. Check out this building here by the way, this used to be a hotel that it's burnt down. To me it just screams arson, I don't know why. It's a lovely hotel. And whenever I see a property like that burnt down I just think insurance job. I've got no evidence to suggest why it should be. It's just what goes through my mind, I don't know. Maybe I'm just suspicious by nature. Anyway, we'll wrap it up there. I'm aware I've been wittering on for some time. But uh, Sometimes it's good just to have a bit of a witter on, isn't it? I know that uh, some of you at least quite like these videos. Well, right, that's it for now. Stick any comments below. If you've not uh, subscribed to me before, then do hit that subscribe button if you've not done so before. It really helps the channel. Helps the uh, algorithm gods and all that. Like the video and all that kind of stuff. And that way, my videos will keep being made and keep being pushed out. All right, that's it for this time. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly Cheerio.